Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Hi, everyone. Good evening. My name is Jennifer. This is a special day for our graduates and for those obtaining membership for our inaugural recipient of the Early Achievement Award and our newest fellow. In just a moment, our platform and special guests, graduates, and award recipients will be joining us, entering from the back. I encourage you to applaud as they enter. Please rise as our graduates and guests are piped in. Thank you, and please be seated. We would like to recognize and thank the Honorable Wade McLaughlin, Premier of the Province of Prince Edward Island, for leading our graduates and our award recipients. We look forward to hearing his remarks shortly. We are pleased to have the following guests with us this evening. Please hold your applause until all platform guests have been introduced. Mr. Terry LeBlanc, Chair of the CPA Canada Board of Directors. Ms. Anne-Marie Gammon, President and Chief Executive Officer, CPA Atlantic School of Business. Ms. Lisa Underhay, Chair of the Board of Directors of the Chartered Professional Accountants of Prince Edward Island. And Ms. Tanya O'Brien, President and Chief Executive Officer of the Chartered Professional Accountants of Prince Edward Island. Ladies and gentlemen, our platform guests. Next, it is my pleasure to introduce honored guests. Please stand or offer a wave when I announce your name. And once again, I would ask you to hold all applause until all guests are introduced. From the Board of Directors of the Charter Professional Accountants of PEI, Ryan Pino, past chairman and a member of the CPA PEI Executive Committee, Denise Lewis Fleming, board member, Rodney Payne, board member, and we also have as honored guests, the Honorable James Elward, leader of the official opposition, Sandy Campbell, accounting technology learning manager, Holland College, Joshua Simon, Holland College, Rochelle Govan, student recruitment advisor with the CPE, CPA Atlantic School of Business, Debbie Good, representing the UPEI School of Business and chair of the CPA PEI Awards Committee. Ladies and gentlemen, our honored guests. We are very pleased to have Premier Wade McLaughlin with us this evening, and I would now like to call on Premier McLaughlin to bring greetings on behalf of the province of Prince Edward Island. 
Premier McLaughlin. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Jennifer. Good evening, everyone, platform guests. Uh, bonsoir tout le monde. Uh, let me say first, of course, uh, to the graduates, uh, congratulations. Uh, it's a great point to reach in your lives and your careers and, uh, and in the, the, the friendships that you have built uh, along the way. It's, uh, uh, I know, uh, an evening uh, when you have an opportunity to take account of uh, your families, uh, your uh, professional mentors, uh, um, and your friends who've uh, worked along with you and supported you and uh, shouldered in as you get to the point that you have reached and are quite uh, warranted to, to celebrate uh, this evening. And I know a little bit about this. Stan McPherson was reminding me this afternoon that I took a few courses in accounting uh, back in the day and uh, wandered on to other paths. Uh, but um, I've had a, a lots of opportunities to know exactly what uh, you uh, work through to, to reach this point. And uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of real work with a capital W. Uh, there's a lot of real friendship uh, with a, a capital F. Uh, and there's a great sense of optimism and something that needs to be done and that's uh, I'm sure what keeps you going and let me if I if I may just say a, a further uh, word about that uh, I'm I don't think there's ever been a better time ever been a better time to start into what you graduates are, are doing as you embark on this next stage of your career as uh, professional accountants and that's in, that's in large measure because of how things are going in our province. We had a national report yesterday that said about business confidence, province by province, Prince Edward Island in the lead, by good measure actually, about 10 points above the national average. The day before, from the conference board, a uh, projection or a forecast province by province for the 2018 economy. Uh, this time, we have to share first place with British Columbia uh, in terms of what the conference board is saying our 2018 economy will do. But we can beat them. Uh, just make sure you put it in, an in a little extra effort. Uh, last year, we were third after Alberta and BC. The year before, third after BC and Ontario. This is, is pretty hard to do that three years in a row. And I just want to take that a little further because it, it really is a, a, a chance to think about and well, I had some conversations in the reception coming in about what is that kind of secret sauce or what is that uh, magic that makes things work the way they do in little Prince Edward Island and one of them is entrepreneurship and it's rich and it's widespread and it's often in un unexpected or small places that get a lot of help from professional accountants. Uh, it's in the way people know each other or find ways to build business partnerships or take risks together or get uh, see opportunities. And accountants have a lot to do with finding those or locating those. And, and let me say, just sort of looking at the group that's here collectively in the room tonight, that that doesn't happen in one three-year stretch. Uh, we've gotten to where we are as a province by uh, the discipline and the foresight and the attention to risk that comes with the, the excellent work and the necessary work that accountants do and do together with, with the business community and other professionals to ensure that we do, when we do get into something and it is going well, that it continues to do well. So I, I really think it's important as we celebrate tonight to recognize what that is for a whole community to succeed uh, together and for you to see your own achievement as a new starting point or a new point of the sparkle and magic as we look at the next decades because this can be sustainable for our province. Uh, a further word is to say how proud I am and how much I appreciate being here 
on this stage uh, when Ron Keefe and Brad Caldwell are being recognized, as they will be uh, later tonight, both people I've, I've known well and have worked closely with and uh, as uh, stand out as further great examples of what accountants do and what, uh, and let me finish on this, what we do uh, together as a community uh, and a province. Uh, uh, you'll find that accountants who get recognized for their excellent professional work are invariably leaders, donors, starter of things in our community and uh, they're also people who know about the humane side of this, the friendship, the community, the, the fun. And I expect before the night is over, you'll have lots of opportunity and it's darn well deserved to have some fun. So everyone, congratulations. I'm delighted to be here. The province is proud of you and we know there are great things coming. Have a great night. Bon soirée. Thank you, Premier McLaughlin. Lisa Underhay will now introduce our guest speaker for this evening. Good evening. To extend congratulations to our CPA graduates on behalf of the national CPA body, it is my pleasure to introduce CPA Canada Board of Directors Chair, Thierry LeBlanc, CPA, CGA, FCPA, FCGA. Terry joined the board in December 2013, serving as a member from 2013 to 2015, as vice chair from 2015 to 2017, and has served in his current role of chairman since 2017. After 33 years of service with the Canada Revenue Agency, CRA, Terry retired in 2010. Throughout his time at the CRA, he worked in Ottawa, Quebec, and Atlantic Canada, holding several executive positions, including Assistant Director Investigations, Assistant Director Audit, Tax Services Office Director, Director Intergovernmental Relations, Account Executive for Atlantic Canada, and finally, Special Advisor to the Assistant Commissioner. Terry has contributed many years of his professional life to the governance of the profession by serving on chapter boards in New Brunswick and many provincial and regional committees. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the chair of CPA Canada, Mr. Terry LeBlanc. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. <clears throat> Merci beaucoup. Merci de m'avoir invité ici. Thanks very much for inviting me this evening. Good evening, colleagues, special guests, ladies and gentlemen. Together, we offer a special salute to all of our new CPAs who are graduating and to CPA PEI members who are receiving awards this evening. We're here this evening to recognize your tremendous accomplishment an achievement that is nothing short of exemplary. Your designation isn't just a business and accounting credential. It's your passport to a world of opportunity, both at home and abroad. I remember how I felt when I completed my program and first began practicing. The nervous energy, facing the unknown, the hard work it took then and continues to take, but it's definitely all worth it. I view the stage of your career as not an end, but as an admission to membership. You maybe are finished with exams and long nights of studies, but you are now beginning a formal relationship with the profession. Each of you is now linked to more than 210,000 peers who will and should hold you accountable for your actions. CPA Canada's mission is to act in the public interest and support members like you. Our organization and the profession are proud 
to champion the Canadian ideal of good business, which promotes sustainable economic growth in conjunction with social development. This ideal is ingrained in your education and values. It's who you are and what you offer to the world. As advocates for you and the profession, we work to add value to the designation's recognition and credibility. Canadian CPAs work in all sectors of the economy. We understand that to help create value and foster success, Canadian CPAs must be leaders, drivers, and enablers of change who can be relied on to keep organizations ahead of the curve. One of the biggest benefits associated with the CPA profession is its commitment to lifelong learning. CPA professional development courses make sure the skills you work so hard to gain are maintained and enhanced as best in class through every phase of your career. By collaborating with employers, other stakeholders, and our international accounting colleagues, the Canadian CPA profession is working to ensure that you are equipped to meet the needs of the marketplace. CPA Canada also develops critical research and thought leadership on business resilience, adaptation, and innovation to help you advise organizations on everything from mitigating the risk of climate change to harnessing the power of data analytics and blockchain technology. Around the world, CPA Canada contributes knowledge and expertise to international standard-setting forums, global accounting organizations, and accounting bodies in developing economies. For example, we work closely with groups such as the International Federation of Accountants and the Global Accounting Allowance to build a stronger profession worldwide. We are proud of our work to improve the future of financial reporting, which will help you meet the evolving needs of business, capital markets, laws, and regulations. We are making our voice heard both domestically and globally on audit quality and on the impact of rapidly sh uh, shifting technologies to ensure that the profession is on the right side of change. CPA Canada is also the profession's respected and valued voice in Ottawa, advocating for public policy to benefit all Canadians and offering recommendations on what the federal government can do to protect the health of Canadian financial system. We recognize that tax policy is an essential lever for the government to achieve key economic and social objectives, meaning jobs, investment, innovation, and other initiatives that directly affect the lives of Canadians. Our framework agreement with the Canada Revenue Agency provides a valuable opportunity to exchange tax expertise and insights that will, over the long term, help ensure a well-run tax system that truly benefits all Canadian taxpayers and businesses. And last, but certainly not least, we are dedicated to giving back and investing in the community. With the help of members who volunteer and share their expertise, we run initiatives such as our award-winning financial literacy program. We're partnering with groups like the Prince of Wales Accounting for Sustainability initiative to encourage businesses to consider the big picture and integrate sustainability into their decision making. It's an exciting time to be a CPA. As you begin the next stage of your career, you're joining a challenging global landscape where business, finance, culture, public policy, and technology constantly intersect. You're here as trustworthy advisors and future business leaders, but I want to remind you that you have the potential to be incredible agents of change, too. You have the ability to make a difference, to make PEI and the world a better place, and to leave a lasting impact on the economy and society. If you permit me a few personal thoughts to our newest members and something to think about for our seasoned members, about how to guarantee yourself a successful career, I have but five recommendations that will guarantee success in your career. One, be ethical in everything that you do. Whether it's in your professional life or your personal life, make sure 
your ethical compass is always on. Two, be interested in your profession. Keep on top of what's happening in the region, in Canada, and around the world within the profession. And if you can, get active with the profession by being on committees, being involved in profession-wide initiatives like the literacy program. Three, volunteer. You have competencies and skills that most people in the general public do not have. So be generous with these competencies and skills and volunteer your technical skills to your community, your municipality, your province, your church. You know that you are our brand ambassadors. And the more members who do good deeds in the community, the more people see the CPA brand as good. Four, be a mentor. Be available to the next generation of CPAs. They need your advice. And you will get more out of being a mentor than you give. It's a win-win scenario. And finally, five, like the best-selling author Stephen Covey says in his book, Seven Habits of Truly Successful People, always sharpen your saw. If you want to stay relevant in the profession, if you want to be an asset to your employer, to your clients, you have to stay sharp. You have to keep up to date and continuously uh, learn. Our continuous professional development requirements and products are there to help you keep your, sharp, uh, your saw sharp. So be thirsty for new knowledge. On behalf of CPA Canada, I wish you much success as you embark on the next chapter of your professional journey. It's a bright future, full of momentum, and possibility, and I look forward to seeing you accomplish great things in your field, as I'm sure many of the award winners who will be recognized tonight have led the way and shown you how. So have a great evening. Merci beaucoup pour l'invitation. Have a great night. Thank you. On behalf of the graduates and members of CPA PEI, we thank you, Terry. A donation has been made to Chance's Family Center of PEI in Terry's name. Thank you. Becoming a chartered professional accountant has three main components. The education component, which culminates in a common final exam and practical experience. It is the completion of all three which leads a graduate to membership. We will begin by recognizing the graduates who have completed their education component and have been successful on the common final exam. These graduates will continue to work to complete their practical experience and then be eligible to apply for membership. As many here who have gone through the program or supported someone going through the program know it requires many hours of study and much sacrifice by both graduates and their families and friends to successfully complete the education program. In this regard, we recognize and appreciate the CPA Atlantic School of Business for educating the graduates so that they may be successful in their studies. I would ask Anne-Marie Gammon and Lisa Underhay to congratulate each graduate as they come forward and they will be presented with a gift on behalf of the membership. We would ask each graduate to approach the stage from the right side and exit on the left. Please note, graduates will have an opportunity after the ceremony to have photos taken on stage by family or friends. We do have a photographer with us this evening, Amy Parsons, and she will capture the evening's ceremony for us. Our first graduate is Caitlin Lord. <clears throat> Caitlin, Caitlin is the daughter of Wayne and Elizabeth Lord and stepdaughter of Joan McMillan. She was raised in Bathurst, New Brunswick, and presently resides in Charlottetown. Caitlin attended the University of Prince Edward Island and is employed with Grant Thornton. Caitlin cites Lacey McLaughlin as her mentor. Congratulations, Caitlin on successfully passing the 2017 CP.
Next, we have Colin Simmons. Colin is the son of Wayne and Natalie Simmons. He was raised on PEI and attended the University of Prince Edward Island. Colin currently resides in Charlottetown and is employed by, with Island Respiratory Specialists. He cites his mentors as Jerry Lanigan and Kevin Andrews. Colin shared with us that the most memorable moment from the training program was having his Aunt Wendy phone him up every couple of weeks to ensure that his courses were going well. Congratulations, Colin. Our next graduate is Matthew Weeks. Matthew is the son of Preston and Phyllis Weeks. He was raised in Charlottetown, where he currently resides with his spouse, Trisha Mossy, and son Cameron. Matthew attended the University of Prince Edward Island and is employed with Murphy Investments Limited. He enjoys being involved in his community, sports, and recreation, including coaching hockey and spending time with his family and son. His mentor is Lisa Robichaud. Matthew shared with us that his most memorable moment from the training program was having his computer crash during day three of the CFI at 3 a.m. with a Friday night deadline. Congratulations, Matthew. Our final graduate is Jason Anthony Wood. The son of Gary and Diane Wood, Jason was raised in Alexandra and currently resides in Hazelbrook, PEI. He is employed with Veterans Affairs Canada. Unfortunately, Jason is unable to be with us this evening, but we certainly want to acknowledge his achievements and wish him congratulations on successful completion of his common final exam. We would now like to recognize those graduates who have completed their education and their practical experience. These graduates have completed all requirements and have been admitted to membership of the Chartered Professional Accountants of Prince Edward Island and thus are eligible to use their designation. We are grateful to employers who have offered a training environment for graduates to, com to complete their practical experience. I would ask Lisa Underhay and Terry LeBlanc to come forward and offer congratulations to those graduates who have obtained membership. Each will be presented with their membership certificate. We would ask those graduates who have obtained membership to proceed to the right side of the stage, as their name is called, and make their way across the stage to receive their membership certificate. Our first new member is Colin Beck, CPA. Colin is the son of Sharon and Norman Beck. He was raised in Charlottetown, where he currently resides. Colin attended the University of Prince Edward Island. He articled with Arsenal Best Cameron Ellis, Charter Professional Accountants, where he is presently employed. Another achievement of Colin's is that he has written and published a book on how to earn the CPA designation entitled, and this is, this is a great title, Deferred Gains, A Practical Roadmap to Earning the CPA Designation. He <laughs> He shares with us that his most memorable moment from the training program was finding out that he passed the CP. Colin credits his mentors as being Kyle Smith and Ryan Power. Congratulations to you, Colin. Our next new member is Tyler Brown, CPA. Tyler is the son of Tim and Michelle Brown. Raised in Michigan, Tyler currently resides in Charlottetown with his spouse, Katie. Tyler attended the University of Prince Edward Island. He is presently employed with BDO, where he also articled and cites Craig Dykerman as his mentor. He shares with us that his most memorable moment from the training program was finding out he passed the CFI. Congratulations, Tyler. Our next new member is Emma Carter, CPA. Emma is the daughter of Helen and the late Tony Carter.
Raised in St. Peter's Bay, Emma currently resides in Blooming Point. Emma attended St. Francis Xavier University and is presently employed with Fitzpatrick and Company. Emma is busily, busily preparing for her wedding next week and is unable to be with us, uh, which is understandable. We offer our congratulations to Emma. Next, we have Catherine Cousins, CPA. <laughs> Catherine is the daughter of Ralph and Jenny Daly. Raised in Charlottetown, Catherine currently resides in North Granville with her spouse, Trent Cousins, and son, Arthur. Catherine attended the University of Prince Edward Island and is presently employed with the Scales Group of Companies. Catherine credits Paul Evoy as being her mentor. She shares with us her most memorable moment from the training program was finishing. <laughs> Congratulations, Catherine. <laughs> Our next new member is Julie DeVoe, CPA. <laughs> Julie is the daughter of Brian and Pamela DeVoe. Raised in Surrey, Julie attended the University of Prince Edward Island. She now lives in Charlottetown with her spouse, Matt Doyle. Julie is currently employed at Fitzpatrick and Company and cites her mentor is Natasha Murphy. Congratulations, Julie. <laughs> Olivia McDonald, CPA, is our next new member. <laughs> Olivia is the daughter of John and Jamila McDonald. Raised in Bedford, Nova Scotia, Olivia attended Acadia University. She now resides in Charlottetown and is employed with Grant Thornton. She has Ryan Innes as her mentor. Congratulations to Olivia. Our next new member this evening is Linda Marjorie Matthews, CPA. I would ask, I would ask that Gordon Matthews, a CPA PEI member, to come forward to introduce his daughter. Good evening. My name is Gordon Matthews. I've been a CPA CGA since 1976. <laughs> it is with great pride that I introduce my daughter Linda. She was raised in York Point by her mother Marjorie and I. Linda attended U. <laughs> <laughs> Linda attended uh, UPEI. is bilingual in English and Spanish and is presently employed by Master Packaging. She is the pianist, organist, and director of the Handbell Choir at First Baptist Church and is the treasurer of Celiac PEI. Now, Linda loves adventure travel, which means she has jumped out of an airplane over Hawaii, walked off the roof of the Stratosphere Tower in Las Vegas, and has been a passenger in a NASCAR stock car. She enjoys many sports, such as softball, curling, running, and kickboxing. Linda credits Lita Chisholm as her mentor. Congratulations, Linda. Patrick McIntyre, CPA, is our next new member. Patrick is the son of Pat and Jackie McIntyre. Raised in Charlottetown, where he presently resides, Patrick attended the University of Prince Edward Island. Patrick is employed with Grant Thornton and cites his mentor as Ryan Innes. He shared with us that his other interests include bank write-ups and T2 checklists. <laughs> 
His most memorable moment of the program was celebrating passing the CFI with his colleagues. Congratulations, Patrick. Our next new member is Megan McQuaid, CPA. <laughs> Megan is the daughter of Peter and Connie McQuaid, raised in Surrey. Megan now resides in Stratford with her fiance, Lucas McCormick. Megan attended the University of New Brunswick and is employed with BioVectra. She cites Darren McGregor as her mentor. Congratulations, Megan. Our next member is Stacy Myers, CPA. <laughs> Stacy is the daughter of Valerie and the late Robert Ward, raised in Dundas, PEI, and now residing in Charlottetown with her spouse, Ron. Stacy is employed at Thinking Big Information Technology, Inc. Unfortunately, Stacy is unable to be with us this evening, but we would like to acknowledge her achievement in passing her CFI and being accepted into membership. We wish her all the best. Congratulations. <laughs> Tracy Reitzmus, CPA, CGA, is our next new member. <laughs> Tracy was raised in Tatamagush, Nova Scotia, and now resides in Charlottetown with her spouse, Carrie, and sons, Mackenzie and Cameron. Tracy completed the Legacy CGA Education Program and obtained her degree from Laurentian University. She is presently employed with the Polyclinic Professional Corporation. Tracy would like to gratefully acknowledge her family and her best friend, Lisa, for the willing sacrifices that were often made for her as she completed her program. Because Tracy completed the Legacy CGA Program, she will be presented with both a CPA certificate and a CGA certificate. Congratulations, Tracy. Next, we welcome Sydney Riggs, CPA, into membership. Sydney is the daughter of Darren Riggs and Gina Stacy. Sydney attended UPEI and currently lives in Charlottetown. She's employed at McPherson Roach Smith and credits Matt McMillan as being her mentor. She shares that her most memorable moment with, from the training program was having her appendix removed three days before the CFI and still managing to pass. That is quite an accomplishment. <laughs> Congratulations, Sydney. Next, we recognize Riley Michael Shea, CPA. <laughs> Riley is the son of Michael and Tammy Shea, raised in Anglo Tignish and now residing in Charlottetown. Riley attended the University of Prince Edward Island. Riley is employed with Grant Thornton and cites his mentors being Ryan Innes. Riley enjoys playing and watching sports and just hanging out. He shares that his most memorable moment from the training program was forgetting his calculator and highlighter for day one of the CFI, which he does not recommend. Congratulations, Riley. <laughs> Our next new member is Amy Song, CPA. The daughter of Guo Yu and Aping Song, Amy was raised in Charlottetown and currently resides in Mississauga, Ontario. She articled with Arsenal Best, Cameron Ellis, and is presently employed at MNP Mississauga. Amy states that her most memorable moments for the program were on the first day of the exam, how extremely nervous she was, and how on the last day of the exam, she was so glad it was over and it was time to have her life back. <laughs> Unfortunately, Amy is unable to be with us this evening, but we'd like to acknowledge her achievement in passing her CFI and being accepted into membership Amy would like to say thank you to everyone that supported her during the program, mostly her parents, who flew 15 hours to visit her, her friends that were always there for her, the partners at Arsenal Best, Cameron Ellis, 
who paid her tuition and offered flexible hours, and other CPA students that supported her and helped her get through the program successfully. She wishes the best of luck to all of you. And we wish her all the best of luck. Congratulations, Amy. So last, but certainly not least, our final new member this evening is Stephen Stretch, CPA. <laughs> Stephen is the son of Ruby and Eric Stretch. Raised in Cumberland, PEI, Stephen attended the University of Prince Edward Island. Stephen now lives in Charlottetown with his spouse, Kendra, and children, Andrew and Matthew, and is employed with McPherson Roach Smith. He cites his mentor as being Ryan Pino. He shares that his most memorable moment from the training program was the wave of relief when he received his final marks. Congratulations, Stephen. And congratulations to all of our newest members. Now, we begin our awards this evening with the CPA Atlantic School of Business Award of Excellence. I would ask Anne-Marie Gammon to introduce and present this award. The vision of CP Atlantic School of Business is to be the center of excellence in attracting, educating, qualifying future business and accounting leaders. With this in mind, we are proud to confer the annual CP Atlantic School of Business Awards of Excellence. The CPA Professional Education Program and the CPA Common Final Examination are both highly rigorous academic undertakings. And as such, the annual award proudly recognizes those candidates in Prince Edward Island who excelled at successfully completing these significant milestones as part of their journey to becoming qualified Chartered Professional Accountants. The criteria for the Award of Excellence includes the following. Being a first-time writer in all the professional education module examinations, as well as the common final examination. Successfully passing all professional education modules and the entire three-day common final examination on the first attempt obtaining a pass with distinction on at least one of the four professional education module components, and finally being a member or a candidate in good standing with the profession. On behalf of the Board of Directors of CP Atlantic School of Business and its staff, we are very pleased to present the Award of Excellence to Catherine Cousins. Congratulations, Catherine, for all your hard work. Excellent. Our next, ooh, our next awards are awarded by CPA PEI. I would ask Tanya O'Brien and Lisa Underhay to introduce and present these awards. Common, the Common Final Exam, the CP, is a rigorous three-day examination that requires candidates to demonstrate the depth and breadth of their competency development in accordance with the CPA competency map. The National Board of Examiners of CPA Canada is responsible for assessing candidates' performance on the CP, and in doing so, the board determines the top candidate by province in its evaluation. CPA Prince Edward Island is proud to recognize the top performer in the September 2017 Common Final Examination with the CPA PEI Award of Achievement. The award is presented this year to Colin Simmons. Congratulations, Colin.
next graduate award is the CPA PEI Leadership Award. This award is presented to the graduate as determined by their peers as having provided leadership or exemplified leadership skills through the CPA experience. The, the recipient of this award is Riley Shea. So in addition to a, a plaque and a cash prize, Riley will be, has been asked to speak on behalf of the uh, graduates this year, and uh, hopefully he's prepared to do that. You're ready. What do you say we try to live you fellas up a bit? <laughs> so first thing I want to say is Riley Shea, CPA. <laughs> I don't know, guys, whenever you say it with my name, it rhymes. A little bit better, I don't know. <laughs> Not to brag. Uh, so obviously, first off, I'm really honored and quite humbled, to be frankly honest, that my classmates chose me to uh, speak on behalf of them today. Um, it's hard enough to speak for myself on a regular basis, um, let alone speak for 20 individuals. So uh, don't expect too much. I didn't write any songs about each of, each of you, and I'm not going to individually thank the parents, so uh, bear with me here. So like Tanya said, uh, she asked me to prepare a short speech. Um, I don't know how short it is, so I practiced before I left the house today, and it, it topped off at about 47 minutes. <laughs> so, um, you know, hang in there, we'll get through it together, how about that? So oftentimes people ask me, so Riley, how did you do it? How did you pass the grueling sea fee? I said it was easy, one of the easiest things I've ever done in my life. So what did I do? How did I prepare? So I would read the question, of course. I would analyze the issue, sure. Conclude, and there you go. <laughs> it's just that simple, really. But realistically, what I would do is, like, how would, how would Riley Shea handle this real-life situation? How would he do this? And whatever Riley Shea would do, I wrote the exact opposite. <laughs> and here I am, CPA. The, joke, the joke's on you guys. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now I got you into it. All right. Time for the speech. So, in thinking of the last two years, um, what really, what summed up our class, like what made up our class, and I think the only word that really came to my mind um, was adversity. Um, we are the class of adversity. The class of 2017 is the class of adversity, really and truly. I mean, you look in this day and age with the accounting profession, uh, moving from the C, uh, CA, the CMA, the CGA to the CPA profession, there is a big transition. I like to consider it as the, the coolening of the accountant. We're not just these pencil pushers that sit behind desks anymore. We're no, we don't sit behind the cubicles in front of the spreadsheet. We're advisors. People actually want to talk to us. <laughs> if you're looking for a spokesperson, I mean... <laughs> no, but, no, but seriously, I think um, each individual has their own uh, unique story of how they passed the CFE, how they got through the CPA PEP program, and really and truly, um, how big of an honor is it to step across the stage and say we finally completed it? Um, so I'd just like to share a few short stories of um, my colleagues and how they kind of got through the program. So I'll start off, and it's, it's already been brought up tonight, uh, Miss Sydney Riggs, who spent uh, three days before the exam in a hospital bed um, with an, uh, an apparently an exploded, I don't really know the medical term, uh, <laughs> appendix, but it seems pretty gruesome. Um, if, the, if the stress of uh, studying for the CPA and uh, writing it wasn't enough, I mean, congratulations, uh, Sydney, you're now a CPA. <laughs> Another one I'd like to add in would be uh, Matthew Weeks, and I think everybody's kind of stealing my thunder here today because he's already mentioned that his computer crapped out on day three of the exam. So, you know, I remember walking out day three pretty happy to be done. It's like, geez, I feel so bad for Matthew. But uh, so they let him, you know, like a few extra minutes at the end because of that uh, kind of mishap. 
As I was leaving the room, sorry, Matt, but I need to get a beer in my stomach right now. <laughs> um, so another one. So Colin Beck, um, as he, as it was already alluded to, he wrote a book. It's called Deferred Gains, and he did this while he was studying and while he was working. And how amazing is that? Like, unbelievable. I re- actually, I read the book, Deferred Gains. It's on Amazon. And Bexie, I'll be sending you an invoice for this shameless plug. Um, and last but not least, probably my favorite story, um, Catherine Cousins. Um, nine months pregnant, literally ready to explode <laughs> in the classroom. And now I hear note that she wins the Excellence Award. Like, that is just truly incredible. Uh, a round of applause for her. I was more worried about spelling my name right on the first page. <laughs> she goes in pregnant and gets the excellent award. <laughs> Unbelievable. So rumor has it, I don't know if this is true or not, she actually gave birth in at the rod in that room that day. <laughs> she ended up, now I don't know if this is true either, but she ended up naming her son after the supervisor who administrated the exam. That might not be true. I might be stretching the truth a little bit there, but... Regardless, a story is a story, right? So anyways, guys, I guess the whole point of this is I really wanted to key in on the adverse class that we had. We came from different backgrounds. We all had different challenges. There was people who worked. There was people who had families, um, volunteered, sports, you name it. Um, I just think that we should give ourselves a round of applause because, quite frankly, what an achievement. And as I say across all you guys, it's pretty rare that we'd have so many uh, professionals in the same room. And we truly are, not to brag, the leaders of tomorrow, the future CFOs, the CEOs, the partners of the future. So in closing, I'd just like to thank parents, family, you name it, everybody who sort of helped us through this long and grueling process. And to the millions watching at home, thank you very much. <laughs> Riley, I, th- I think your favorite word is explode, and, and you had me laughing so hard I thought I was going to explode. Um, thank you, Riley, and congratulations to you, Catherine and Colin, on your awards. Great work. It is now with great pleasure that I now turn your attention to our member awards. Our first member award this, this evening is the Early Achievement Award. It celebrates those members who distinguish themselves early in their careers through professional achievement and volunteer service. Tonight, we present our inaugural inaugural early achievement to Brad Colwell. I would direct your attention to the screen behind me for a video to honor Brad and his accomplishments to date. Chartered professional accountants of Prince Edward Island are pleased to award their inaugural Early Achievement Award for professional achievement and volunteer service to Brad Caldwell. Brad obtained his CPA designation in 2007 while working with BFM Chartered Accountants. He then moved to Innovation PEI as a financial analyst. He continued to advance his career, moving to Manager of Foreign Investment and then to Controller. Brad brings a genuine caring approach to the CPA profession. Accounting is, is, I see it as problem solving. To me, there's there's nothing more uh, more interesting and more valuable than than, than solving problems for people. But not just uh, debits and credits and and, and, and ledger books. It's it's the opportunity to solve real problems that that exist uh, for people. 
A main focus of Brad's work has been the betterment of education in Prince Edward Island. In 2015, Brad became Director of Student Financial Assistance and most recently was named Acting Deputy Minister of the Department of Workforce and Advanced Learning. To, to know that uh, the decisions and programs and policies you can develop can genuinely make a difference in people's lives. And, and that sounds cliche, but it's true. And to be able to do that and have the ability to do that every day is, is, is it's very rewarding and very fortunate to do so. Fortunate also is the community where Brad volunteers so much of his talent. Brad has served with the Holland College Board of Governors, the Board of Directors of Collège de Lille and the Maritime Provinces Higher Education Commission. As CPAs, we, we have the benefit of, of bringing uh, an entirely different skill set to the organizations that we volunteer with. And to be able to use uh, your training in, in, in such a way that can help benefit so many different meaningful organizations is, is, is something that's, that's very important. So sometimes at a board level you can get caught up in the financial pieces and, and worry about the nickels and dimes, but at the end of the day the athlete experience is really important and I think he brings that to the table and is always able to bring it back to what are we doing this for, why do we do what we do. When he's making decisions for government, um, in addition to you know your standard facts and figures that you deal with, he's always thinking of the impact on the person. And I think that just comes from him being passionate about people and having a love for people and wanting people to do well. He's a very committed board member. People listen to what he has to say uh, because he is so deliberate and, uh, and thoughtful. Brad's a busy guy. Brad has three young children um, and a very busy uh, musician wife. Uh, he's certainly a big family man. He's, he's taken his kids out to some of our events. He's able to really balance that whole work-life balance really well in his volunteer um, activities as well, so I think he, he, he's a great guy. From my observation on the Board of Governors of Holland College and the value that he has brought to the board and the way he conducts himself in such a respectful and meaningful way, I believe that he is very worthy of this honor. Ladies and gentlemen, Brad Colwell. I would ask Lisa Underhay to present this award. Hello everyone. Jen, I hope you don't mind if I really draw attention to the fact that I need to lift this microphone. Uh, Tanya informed me I need to uh, speak to this and, and I'm very happy to do so. Um, I should mention beforehand that Brad Caldwell's mentor is also Ryan Innes. <laughs> uh, there, there's no greater honor than to be nominated and to receive recognition from your peers. And from that, I'm truly humbled. I'm also very impressed that they were able to cobble together a three and a half minute video that, that looks so favorably upon me. So, so uh, my, my certainly hats off to Darren and, and the video editing crew. Um, I, I was conversing with uh, Ryan Pino and, and, and Mike uh, uh, Fitzpatrick, the, the, the uh, recipients of the Early Achievement Award uh, under the, uh, the CA designation earlier, and uh, it was certainly uh, uh, neat, even though Fitzy was uh, implying that I, I, I may not meet the cutoff since we took some courses together, but Pino assures me I, I met it by seven days, so this is good. I get to be the most senior early achiever, which is great. One, uh, achievement is, is a funny word and, and a funny notion. Um, and no matter in what field or what profession you're in, one can't achieve without the support um, that's there available. Um, my, my parents, Brian and Claire, are here tonight. Um, uh, certainly, if, if you want to chuckle, uh, go talk to Dad for a while afterwards. Um, and, and much like many of the professionals in this room, uh, it, it was them who instilled that work ethic uh, that, that, 
that that uh, thrusted me toward a any success I I've received, um, and and to move forward as as you involve uh, yourself in the community, uh, you know, it's that sense of civic duty that 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 we receive at a young age, and, and I thank mom and dad for that. Uh, with support as well, uh, my 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 loving wife Rachel uh, is is actually on tour tonight. Uh, she's in Montreal with a show. Um, but uh, I, I can't say enough about what she does to help me further my uh, career and uh, help propel me to any sort of success um, in addition to being just an incredible mom and incredible person as well. Uh, it, it's always great to be uh, surrounded by colleagues, um, many familiar faces as, as we get together for, for, for conversation and fellowship. See Gerard uh, up there and Jennifer and and I really can't say enough about you know where I started and thank them enough for taking a chance on this lanky and mildly awkward kid from up west and and giving him the opportunity um, that that I received and, and and further as 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 my career progressed to, to Premier McLaughlin um, and and others uh, in in the civil service who who helped me. Um, prosper in that world as well. Um, I, I see a few of my uh, former graduates, um, and, and I hope that, that each of the graduates here appreciate uh, you know, the bond that, that you've formed over this last while. Um, it, it's, it's amazing how you can always keep in touch. And uh, I was born in 1983, so every second male was named Ryan. But it's nice to see an assortment of Ryans recognized as the mentors. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> here tonight, um, and, and, and nice to, to uh, converse with them as well. And it, it's very comforting to know that the future of the profession and, and the future of, of uh, and, and I don't want to sound um, you know, overly dramatic about this, but, but really the future of, of the island uh, economy and, and business community is in great hands. I see my, my cousin-in-law, Colin, um, who literally wrote the book on passing the, isn't that amazing? Yeah, yeah, let's give a hand up for that too. Right on. Um, I'm mildly conflicted about Colin joining a profession. I, 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 I don't. I, he's taller than me, right? So, I got some issues with that. Um, you know, Terry mentioned about uh, the s some pieces of advice, and um, you know that made me reflect. Uh, in, in, gee, sorry. Uh, in in the past year. We lost a true classmate, friend, uh, colleague, uh, Abby, and uh, you know she she sees the opportunity um, in 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 the time that she had to to stop and smell the roses, to 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 live life, to see the world, to seize the day, uh, as, as it sounds cliche. So, if the one piece uh, um, of advice that I can pass on and and you know, I know myself and, and other people often think of, of Abby and her contribution to the accounting community is, is to do that, you know, em empower yourself to, uh, to, to succeed and to thrive, but, but to also see the world, live the world. The world's beautiful. Enjoy it. Uh, again, thank you so much. I'm truly honored, and I uh, look forward to uh, continuing the celebration later tonight. Thanks. Thanks, Brad, and, and congratulations again. We are very pleased to award a fellow this evening. For those just beginning in the profession, the dedication and accomplishment of members awarded this distinction should give and provide inspiration as you plan for your future. The title of fellow, designated by the initials FCPA, formerly recognizes CPAs who have rendered exceptional service to the profession and or whose achievements in their careers or in the community have earned them distinction and brought honor to the profession. We have with us this evening the following fellows of the Chartered Professional Accountants. David Arsenault, Sandy Campbell, Richard Corkum, Gerard Fitzpatrick, Anne-Marie Gammon, Debbie Good, Terry Keefe, Terry LeBlanc, Stan McPherson, Susan McIsaac, Kathy O'Rourke, John Potter, and Alex Robert.
And now we add our newest FCPA, Ron Keefe. I would direct your attention to the screen behind me for a video to honor Ron and his accomplishments. Chartered professional accountants of PEI are pleased to announce the 2017 Fellow for Career Achievement and Community Contributions to Ron Keefe. Ron Keefe has always had a fascination with numbers and math. He took that interest to launch his career path in a couple of directions. There were two professions actually that I was very interested in. Uh, the first one being uh, legal uh, and the second being uh, accounting. And I'm not exactly sure who influenced that direction or how I got into that direction, but certainly seeing people that were respected in the community and the province in those particular professions uh, led me to go in that direction. And I think a certain aptitude uh, for uh, both of those professions. Ron became a member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of PEI in 1985 and went on to practice law at Stuart McKelvey, where he was partner. Ron's astounding work in the accounting profession is evident in his many business dealings which have helped shape PEI's economy. And accountants uh, not only measure the economy, but they have a great influence on it. I look at the people that are in the profession and what they have done not only with respect to their professional careers and in terms of assisting uh, charitable organizations, uh, social organizations, but the actual impact that they have on the economic well-being of a jurisdiction such as Prince Edward Island. Ron Keefe began to pursue business interests in 2004. As CEO of Diagnostic Chemicals and BioVectra, he oversaw unprecedented growth in the company and the bioscience industry in the region. I saw the opportunity that bioscience can provide to the economy of PEI. I think there's also great opportunity in other areas and some of the work I'm doing today not only involves uh, bioscience companies but tech companies, uh, startup companies in general in terms of trying to take an idea from its inception uh, through to the marketplace. Island Advance, an initiative of the Greater Charlottetown Area Chamber of Commerce, began to take shape in 2012. And with Ron's steadfast leadership and volunteer efforts, that program has helped support, encourage, and promote entrepreneurship in Prince Edward Island. Ron spends countless hours with other organizations as well, including Communities 13, the University of Prince Edward Island, Holland College, Genome Atlantic, and the PEI Bio Alliance. I really have enjoyed working with a lot of volunteers over the years. These people are very, very passionate, and, and I share that passion with them uh, and try to get things done that will uh, move things forward. Ron has dedicated his optimism, persistence, and proactive approach to a long list of businesses and organizations over the past 30 plus years. And he is grateful to have worked alongside so many incredible people. You deal with um, people that are just absolutely incredible, whether they be scientists, um, whether they be accountants, whether they be just straight out business people or people that are, are working uh, in various parts of the operation. It's critical to have exceptional people around you and I have been very, very fortunate to have had that over the years. Ron doesn't come into a, a, an entity to, to lead it. He comes into it to guide it. And in most of the organizations that, that he's been involved with, it becomes clear that, that he is the person with the ideas and the drive to get something done. He also is a good listener. And that's a very important for people that are in, you know, in executive positions, because listening to problems and getting the, is, you know, getting the facts straight, is a very important part of the of the discussion. Ron's uh, approach um, with uh, the business community, with the leaders sitting around our advisory board, um, is uh, respectful, 
um, thoughtful and he can have a vision for what needs to get done and, and expresses that and allows everyone to have a voice around the table and I think that's made a difference. I think one, one of the things that gets Ron Keefe up in the morning is his understanding of uh, the economy of the province and, and desire to see a future for his children and grandchildren and our children and grandchildren here in Prince Edward Island. More sophisticated, science-based businesses, job opportunities that are going to attract and retain our youth. By volunteering and sharing his vision, um, Ron has contributed to the culture of entrepreneurship in our province and will continue to do so. Over the past number of years, he, his interest and his efforts in making the community more successful is wonderful. I don't think Ron ever turned anybody down and just went quietly about that aspect of what he felt was uh, and still feels is part of just what you do as a member of the community. For all the things that Ron has done, he's succeeded at them and left a standard that's going to be hard to be met by those that are coming in behind him. Ladies and gentlemen, Ron Keefe. I would ask Lisa Underhay to present this award. Well, uh, like Brad, I was asked to say a few words. Uh, I remember Pat Binns always indicated to us if we asked him to speak at something, um, and Premier McLaughlin has followed suit, they were always the first to speak. And uh, it's always difficult to be one of the last to speak at an event like this, particularly following people like uh, Riley Shea. Uh, <laughs> I am 100% convinced that he is a relative of my sister-in-law, Debbie Shea, uh, and uh, contains that same anglo uh, tignish uh, humor. And uh, I spent a few days with Debbie in Florida this winter, and a few days was quite enough. Thank you. <laughs> not, not, not that Riley, uh, you know, no, it was great. So, listen, I wanted to start off with, uh, that was a great video, you know, it was awesome. I told my grandkids, three of them, whom are here tonight, that we were coming to see Fast and Furious, uh, pr a preview. <laughs> they love Fast and Furious. I'm not quite sure they were taken by that, but certainly uh, it was a great video uh, in terms of what they had to work with. I am not a movie star, for sure. I certainly don't deserve to be in the leading role in the film. Um, the stage is really not where I'm most comfortable. Someone asked me if I was going to be nervous tonight, and I wasn't until I heard somebody from CRA was up on the stage here. And I oh, geez, really? Really? Um, anyway, uh, you know, I, I really... Um, the stage was difficult for, for me from early on. Uh, I can recall... I'm from King Cora. I can recall being in grade three or four and being asked to participate in a concert. And there were four of us asked to get up and, and sing a, a carol. And so after the first rehearsal, everything was pretty good. Second rehearsal, the di music director uh, came to me and said, uh, maybe you could try humming. <laughs> that hurt a bit. After another rehearsal was maybe you could do some lip syncing. And I said, uh, um, the, uh, the end of, that, that was before uh, Millie Vanilli, you know, and those that remember Millie Vanilli before they made it popular or unpopular, as the case might be. Um, it, it's funny that one of those four is also a CPA in, in, uh, in PEI. And uh, for those that, uh, it's a fun fact, uh, it's not Brian Cameron. It's another CPA uh, from Kinkora. 
Um, and I'm sure Brian probably couldn't carry a tune just like myself. Uh, so I'm very honored to, uh, uh, to receive this uh, designation tonight, uh, to be nominated and uh, supported by such a distinguished group of people. It's simply awesome. Uh, thank you for, uh, thank you to the committee. Uh, thank you to those that participated in the video and, and certainly thank you to CPA, CPA PEI. This was really unexpected and, and, uh, and really, in my view, an unlikely occurrence. You know, I got thinking about this, you know, what unlikely occurrences are happening in the world? This was one of them. Not a big one, but one of them. Uh, you know, I'm thinking about the tax refund I received recently. Like, that was an unlikely occurrence. It was just so exciting to get it. You picked it up, and I got to the post office, and I came out with this here CRA letter, and I opened it up, and it was a checking it. I'm like, holy geez, uh, you know, I've been around here for 40 years. I can't remember getting one of those before from CRA. And then I realized as I was in the car, well, that's because I paid too much in. So, but that's okay. Uh, you know, another thing that I think about is Las Vegas and what they're doing, which we're glad and Mike Kelly are doing and there, you know, and the, and the likelihood or the possibility of them winning a Stanley Cup is just so um, initially unlikely, but hopefully uh, something that could happen and will happen. And I thought about the Leafs, and then I thought, well, you know, not all things are unlikely. There, you know, there are certain things that are certain, you know. I always pick on the Leafs. If you've noticed the family photo, there were a lot of Canadians' jersey in that particular photo. And, and so we're typically Canadians' fan, although my mother, who lost her memory at the end of her life, started cheering for the Leafs, which was a... <laughs> Sad day for us, but anyway, that was these things happen. Uh, so yeah, I thought you know the Leafs they're not going to happen, and and then I thought about Donald Trump, and I thought he was elected president. Now who could have thought that that would actually happen? So there are things that happen in this world that are unlikely, and this is one of them. And I really am grateful to to the people that that uh, bestowed this honor on me today. Uh, let me acknowledge and, and congratulate the graduates. I, it's kind of funny. I did this up, and then I listened to myself speak there, and I'm going to repeat some of the stuff that I said in my, in my video. Uh, I, I would like to also congratulate uh, Brad on his well-deserved uh, award. To the graduates, um, the career you have chosen, the profession you are now part of, is both exciting and rewarding. Uh, it really has been for me. I will say uh, this to you, and I know Brad gets it and many others in the room uh, get it. You now have an obligation, uh, a responsibility that goes well beyond uh, the profession or well beyond what you have your job. You have a responsibility to, to the profession. I'm not talking about something uh, that was referred to earlier uh, in terms of the code of conduct or the code of ethics. That's a given that you have to do that. But I think it's about having a higher purpose and a a commitment to the betterment of not only yourself and your family, but also to others. Uh, there are many ways to fulfill that responsibility, that obligation. But as accountants, and thinking about it, the core accounting function, and I did say this in the video, is, is measurement. It's measurement of economic activity. You should do that, but you should also seek out ways to influence that activity. Uh, the Premier has spoken to this every leader, and I think the leader of the opposition, James Howard, is here. Every leader will speak to the same thing. Economic activity is vital. A strong economy is required to support many things uh, that we want as a society, not the least of which is a robust health uh, system, an exceptional education system, appropriate infrastructure, strong and vibrant uh, community. So to the graduates, some of whom I know, one of whom was with BioVector, and I'm so happy that she uh, graduated this evening and got her CPA and, of course, some others that I have had contact with over the years. But I, I really encourage you to become, uh, and I think Brad may have even mentioned this, uh, and certainly the Premier as well, to become an influencer, not only uh, a person that, um, that, that has a job but also tries to influence. I, I, I view that... Um, the CPAs are, are quiet counsel. I, I have two professions and have participated in, in two professions in my life. One is the more adversarial advocate uh, profession, and the other is the 
what I call the quiet council. The the quiet council, and I've known many of them uh, that have been just absolutely exceptional and critical to my career. I've had the good fortune of being part of those two professions that intersected, in, in my case, at the point of business activity. I've had the opportunity to work with many exceptional people in law, accounting, and business. I owe a debt of not only gratitude, but a real debt that needs to be repaid. And, and my way of trying to repay that debt is to push an agenda that moves our economy forward in a sustainable way. So, so I really encourage you to take that to heart. Uh, I think you've heard it enough tonight and probably are thinking, geez, I gotta get out to the bar, and that's good, because I'm kind of thinking the same thing. Um, so uh, the last thing, though, I wanted to say, speaking of that and gratitude, I wanted to acknowledge and thank uh, my family for their support. Uh, my three of seven grandkids are here tonight, and sitting through this is really, really riveting, I'm sure. But, um, you know, it's, it's nice to have them here. Uh, my brother Terry is here, who's also a, an FCPA. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to, to have him attend as well. Uh, we have a warm and caring family with a strong commitment to the actual family unit, uh, to education, and, and to the community. Uh, to my wife, Susan, who has spent more than 40 years enduring, um, as she would put it, my different sense of humor. I heard it today many times. I said to her, what am I going to speak about? And she said, uh, well, please don't say anything funny, because that just doesn't work. I said, I, you know, I, I said, should I dance? And she said... I think I'd rather have you sing, and I'm thinking, well, I remember grade three, and there's no way I'm singing. <laughs> so I, I really appreciate uh, your support. Uh, and, and to my children, Melissa, who's here, and Mary Jane, who's in Halifax, I'm sure watching this on YouTube with her three children, probably having a glass of wine sleeping. Um, and uh, to my son, Patrick, who is also here uh, this evening, and to, as I indicated, my very special uh, seven grandchildren, uh, six uh, grandsons, and one princess. So I think uh, that's it for me tonight. The bar is, no, I, I'm not supposed to say that. The bar is open, no. Uh, again, thank you very much for this honor. Ron, early in your speech, you said you're not a, a movie star, but, you know, I think you could pass for Vin Diesel's twin. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ron. This concludes the formal part of the evening. On behalf of CPA PEI, I'd like to thank you for joining us this evening in recognizing the achievements of our graduates and award winners and invite all of you to join us for dessert in the foyer as we continue to celebrate. As mentioned earlier, anyone who would like to come forward for pictures may do so. Our photographer is available for photos with platform guests or with your friends and family. Also, I'd like to ask that the graduates come to the front of the stage because uh, we'd like to do a group photo. Thank you, everyone, and enjoy the remainder of your evening. <laughs>